what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel so where do we leave off with the crx in the last video guys we got the engine installed we have a lot of the stuff buttoned up as far as the header the exhaust the drive shaft all of the wiring harnesses and vacuum lines we got the driver's side axles and all that installed we made major progress and uh, today we're going to be making more in hopes of getting this car to turn on so last night i took off to my buddy's house bnr fittings so i had to go to his house yesterday to grab some things that I needed to install on uh, the engine before we try to fire it over. Let me show you guys real quick what I picked up. BNRfittings.com So if you guys listened to what I said in the last video, we are running a GT3076 and this is a ball bearing setup. So we need water line fittings and everything for this turbo to uh, work efficiently and not destroy it like I did my GT35R ball bearing. So what I went to go pick up was some fittings for the water lines. Right here we have dash six weld on bungs. I got a couple of these just in case, you know, I need it for whatever reason. And this one right here, I'm gonna be welding on the bottom of my radiator, which is where this line is currently going. I'm gonna weld this right here, right? And that'll be one of the feed um, inlets to the turbo. And then I got some caps for it right here as well too. Why? Because we are gonna be running all motor for right now and I need to block it off so we don't go leaking coolant because we're not using, um, you know, we're not using the fitting just yet for the water line. I also went and got um, this one. This is for the other water line right there in the back of the turbo. And this goes to the coolant, um, the coolant uh, fitting down here that uh, drains all the coolant from the block. And then I went to go grab a couple more dash 10 bungs because I am going to bung another valve cover since mine um, it's not here anymore. I need a new valve cover with bungs for my cash can setup And I went and got a couple dash 10 caps right here and these caps are for This valve cover and I'm just gonna block off the two in the front run the two in the back because this is an OBD2 block without the Black box in the back, so I need the engine to breathe. I'm gonna run the catch can on the all motor setup, block the two in the front, and the third one right here is for the uh, Moroso Oil Pan Dash 10 since we're not running a return line to it. Um, I also went and got some couplers and T bolt clamps because all of mine kind of dispersed through everybody else's car, so I had to go buy a whole bunch of new stuff for mine. And uh, I think I think we have everything other than downpipe material, which I am gonna go to my buddy Kel's house later, Kelly built, to go grab some material from him so we can do our turbo stuff, which I don't think I'll cover in this video, but at least a radiator fitting, install that, whatever else I have to put into the car, and also modify my passenger axle so we can get that all buttoned up as well too. So I came out here this morning and I had seen this vice here. Not sure where it came from. I'm sure my brother put it here, but ah, uh, this is convenient. Why? Because I can stick the radiator in here and drill out my hole. Mm. I know this one still has coolant in it. Hopefully it doesn't make a giant mess. But I do have my tray underneath, so hopefully it catches the coolant.
not shabby. So what I'm gonna do with this line, I have I have a couple of dash threes, uh, steel fitting that I could use to uh, kind of just plug this up. So what I mean by plugging it up is I can just weld the other side of the hole shut, screw the dash three uh, into here, and just kind of feed this guy back there and just kind of have it chilling. This car is not gonna be all motor for uh, a long time, so uh, I just need something to plug it up so it doesn't spew oil out of it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my solution for this guy. Uh, that's blocked off. We have this fitting right here off the block with the dash six cap on it. So that way, uh, you know, we can run it all motor without spewing coolant out of there. Um, I think the only coolant line I'm missing right now is the U from the thermostat housing to the intake manifold. I don't want to take all the stuff off of this engine. I want to get it to be as complete as possible, so I'm not gonna rob it. Um, so I gotta grab that. I gotta grab a stock map sensor from my storage unit. This one has a four bar, but I'm gonna leave the four bar here, uh, stick a vacuum line on um, the stock one, and then plug it up to the vacuum port back here, uh, one of these guys, and then just plug up the map to that and uh, run off the base map that's currently in the ECU. And then when we go to the dyno and, you know, turn it up, we'll, we'll hook it up to the Honda 4 bar and, you know, we don't have to like mess with trying to get a tool down here to get this off. So other than that, I noticed that this guy is gone because we put that in Tyga's uh, K uh, CRV so he can get temp reading to his cluster. So I need to stick one on there. Distributor, a lot of small odds and ends, but right now I am going to uh shoot i gotta take off the lower radiator hose from the other engine stick it on here but i'm gonna tie it in with the radiator before sticking the radiator in here and uh once i do all of that i'm gonna go to my buddy's house get some material for the downpipe which we'll probably take care of later and we'll come back and we'll modify the axle and i'll talk a little bit about that as well too you know i've been searching for like 45 minutes now um i cannot find my upper radiator hose the radiator hose that I'm looking for is for a GSR head, uh, B20 LS, because the water neck is in the front. The one that came off the Type R, the Type R head is the same casting as a B16, and the water neck is in the back, right? And uh, it will make it too long. So I don't want to use this, cut it up, to make it fit the GSR, because I know I have a GSR one somewhere. Because this is the original head that's off this car, and I had an upper radiator neck for it. I just don't know where it's at, but... I'm kind of going through some of my pictures and uh, you know when I use a lot of my stuff for everybody else's car I don't have my stuff when I need it so I am probably I don't know, I'll probably put it off for the time being but we got the radiator lower radiator hose and uh, I'm gonna use this one this time around I had a Mishimoto one that was sitting here before but it was kind of flopping around so the stock um, reservoir is gonna do it just fine I think it's gonna be out of the way of the uh, ram horn uh, runner that sits right here boy as tight as can be right shout out to Kelly built for hooking it up with seven and a half degree uh, pies. Uh, these are, I think, I don't know how many pieces, two, four, six, eight pieces. And this is gonna help make that stupid tight bend that I'm gonna need for my downpipe. It gave me a 90 and some straights. So again, I still need to get some stuff like flex pipe, uh, flanges. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with V-band yet. I don't have a lot of space under the car, but you know, I'm probably gonna end up raising the car back up anyways, but we'll definitely take care of the downpipe um, another day, tomorrow maybe, or this weekend. But um, I'm gonna go to Walmart real quick, guys, and then I'm gonna go back home and make some more progress on the axles. So I was stuck here all morning and um, early afternoon. I didn't eat anything because I didn't, I didn't leave to go buy something to eat because I woke up this morning and everybody went camping. And they left me with my niece, surprisingly. I typically don't like um, leaving them alone. So I uh, was chilling here all day, just trying to find something to do. My mind's running in circles. And uh, I hit up my brother, you know, um, 
her mom's gonna come get her and uh, she finally left so then I left went to Kel's house got all the pies shout out to Kel again for doing these seven and a half degree pies he gave me three eight and uh, this should be enough to do my bend for my downpipe which you guys can see sticks out really far uh, he made this a while ago so this is like a section of Kelly built downpipe but I can't use this in my car because space I need a tighter bend so I got all the materials for that but on my way to the store I stopped to get something to eat first and I was so hungry I just got something to eat and drove straight home so I didn't go to the parts store I didn't get the hoses I needed I didn't get the fluids I didn't get the upper radiator hose just just everything else so I found an old banjo fitting this guy right here um, this came universal in, a, in a, a clutch line that I bought and I used the other one so this was just a spare I don't have the banjo uh, bolt to it anyway so I welded it shut bolted in right here to the dash 3 and that should block oil from coming out of this line and uh, eliminate me having to remove this line completely so that's just gonna hang out there got a stock map sensor chilling right here with vacuum line to the manhole and it's plugged in four bars still connected to the throttle body this will work out just fine for now I found this hose in my box of hose right there and and I got this one um, secured I don't have a temp sensor on the side of the head and I don't want to put a distributor on until I get that I got the spark plugs uh, for the coil pack in place these are 11s um, coil pack is secured wired up everything's all buttoned up here so right now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna clean this real quick and then I'm gonna grab my axle right there and talk about that a little bit and then I think I think that's all I'm gonna do for today there is a little uh, rubber grommet in the back to kind of help protect the paint although the paint in this car is pretty it's pretty messed up this vodka is not mine um, but it's been in the garage for a little while might have been a trade-off or something with a different valve cover and I'm not sure why there's Teflon on here if you guys don't know AN fittings don't require Teflon this is like a self-sealing um, design the way this thing is tapered in and the way it's tapered in there had to make sure I had some boot straps before I did this I'm gonna show you guys why I'm swapping out the uh, the inner joints so this car has an all-wheel drive CRV RD1 spec transmission and the B-series axle works this is a regular like 90 plus Integra passenger axle right never had an issue with this in a front wheel drive trans and I never really had an issue with it in the CRV trans but after doing a lot of research after driving this car for like when this car go all wheel drive um, maybe a year and a little over a year and a half let's just say like that and uh, I never really had an issue until I took it up highway 9 highway 9 we we did some twisties uh, a little abuse on the car and I noticed that the passenger side was making some weird noises now I kind of knew about this but never occurred to me until I really started taking hard turns in the car I feel like this is popping in out of trans why because now that I have this thank you Joaquin because I pulled this off of his transmission that I was working on last time he doesn't have any need for it so I kind of kept it to really see for myself what the differences are so if you look like right here you can see how much more this is sticking outward and I feel like why this one keeps popping out is that it is not long enough to go in the tranny for the sir clip to clip itself into the diff and um, after reading online Facebook groups it it makes sense so if you look we are at two I don't know it's like two and an eighth right but if I measure over here we're a little over two and a quarter so this is definitely longer and I think swapping this out is going to help that click clacking noise on my passenger side and all I'm pretty much going to do is cut this strap without messing up the boot pop this end out this one I think has a sir clip so I'm not worried about this end this one should just pop out and slip this one over put a new strap on it and we'll stick this back into the car so I'm gonna go ahead and do that quick huh this is a lot easier than the other strap because if you guys don't know CV uh, boot has like 
two different straps. There's one that winds and then you cut it off and bend it over. This one, you uh, stick it in the tab right here and then you crimp it, which pulls it super tight. Um, this funny thing is I found this in the junkyard. That's why I have this style. Uh, typically I use the winding one, but I have both tools. I bought it off of Amazon for super cheap. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glove on because this is gonna be messy. Now, I'm gonna try to salvage all of the grease because I totally forgot about it. And I don't have any grease packs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go find a spoon real quick. And the other thing was, when I took this axle off the first time, it literally just slid out of the transmission without effort. So that's like another indication that we know the circ clip is not 100% seated and clipped in like it's supposed to. So hopefully, like I said, this is going to help the click clacking issue. So we have an issue. If you guys see that wall right there, one, two, and three, uh, this is more, how do you say it? There's more meat to the walls than it is on this one, right? I don't know if you guys can see it how it sticks out further. So that is making this bottom out and only half of the bearing goes in this cup. I was also told that a base model RSX axle, like the one I'm using in the KRX, would work fine on the passenger side of a B-Series uh, because one, it's a 32 outer and two, it's the same length. But right now, I'm, I'm gonna have to transfer the grease back, put that back on, put a new strap on it. Just use it for now until I find a different solution um, another day. And uh, we'll, we'll situate that then. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse this process, guys. That sucked. Got everything on the passenger side reconnected. Everything is solid down there. Uh, Jesus came through with an upper radiator hose. And he also came through with the coolant temp sensor, which I installed. Uh, what the hell? Why is there so many ants in my freaking car? Weird. But yeah, coolant temp sensors right there. RTV installed. Plug is in it. And then I threw my distributor on. And uh, last night when I went to go get all my fittings, I exchanged my cap because I received the wrong one. And uh, Brian from BNR Fitting got me the correct one and in black because the other one was silver. So now I have the cop um, kit, like the coil delete distributor cap uh, that doesn't have all the nipples and everything. It looks a lot cleaner. Um, kind of want to paint the valve cover black because manifold is black. And now that this is black, it kind of complements it. Maybe even paint my charge pipe black too. Kind of changed the theme from when it was blue. Um, not sure yet, but... We are buttoned up here in the engine bay, other than a few things I gotta buy tomorrow. Engine oil, transmission oil, synchro mesh, and I need this 5 8 coolant line from here to the idle air control valve in the back, and then this thing should be ready to fire over. So if you guys wanna stick around and see the car turned on, be sure to hit the subscribe button, but man, man, where you been all day, bro? And if you guys enjoyed the progress update here on the CRX, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. We made a lot of progress. We are one step closer to getting this car to turn on. And then once everything is good and dandy with this engine, all motor, we're going to start all the fabrication stuff. Once again, big shout out to Kel for uh, hooking it up with all of the pies and bends and everything I need for my new downpipe, which I'm more than certain that I'm going to do tomorrow after I get the car to turn on. So obviously, I want to situate that before we move into this. But... Um, I have confidence. I have confidence everything's going to turn out well. So I am going to end the night here. My buddy Paco's in the back right there as well too. But again, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stick around for the first startup of the new engine for the CRX, although we know it turned on before in Tiger's car, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.